I don't know how the call came through. Uh, I'm getting my lights on. on. We'll, we'll wait until people come on. Because I know everybody's working. Uh, Two o'clock, we're trying to find a good time that works for everybody. Um, and gets as many people on as possible. So I'm excited to be here for you guys to debut a brand new oven, right? Uh, a couple weeks ago, we showed you the Maestro 60. It has had uh, fantastic, fantastic uh, responses, and it's been really successful. We very strategically wanted to wait and debut a new oven as well. So we have our Maestro 60, which is a fantastic oven made by Fontana, right? Both of these ovens are made by Fontana, and we have its little brother, the Maestro 40. Now, the way that breaks down is a couple different ways, right? Essentially, it's the exact same oven. Um, the only thing that really is changing are the dimensions. So, one is a little bit larger, one's a little bit smaller. We'll go through specifics on how they break down one versus the other, but ultimately, these are Brand new units, the design is exactly the same. You can see they are masterfully and uh, artistically designed. They look beautiful, they work fantastically, they're incredibly efficient, and it has the exact same manufacturing, right, that we at Fontana pride ourselves in. This is not something that is uh, shipped off and all the components are then assembled together. Fontana is still making this in-house. They, they weld the shell together, they insulate it, top, sides, bottom, completely, and then they assemble everything again from the exterior. So these are wonderful units, great to be outside. They are small, but they are tanks. Now, in comparing the two different sizes, we have our Maestro 60. Now I'm gonna read some specifications because they're all in centimeters, but I wanna just kinda get it correct, right? This is a brand new unit. So the external dimensions of our Maestro 60 are 22 deep, 30 wide, and 23 high, right? That's the oven itself. Then you add the chimney, you add the chimney cap, which is a male-female thing. So it just slides in place just like it does with the rest of Fontana's fantastic products. You don't have to screw anything in place. It holds itself in place. So once again, we're looking at 20 by 30, essentially, exterior-wise, and then 23 high. Versus a more uniform footprint of the Maestro 40. The Maestro 40 is essentially 22 by 22 by 23. The height is the same, right? Pretty much exactly the same. Now, you might notice that there is a height a little bit of a height discrepancy. And that's because of how the ovens arrive. Uh, there's also a difference in the door, right? We have the Maestro 40 and the Maestro 60. This Maestro 60 is one of our prototype ovens. I've been using it, the guys here have been using it, we've had people all around the US using it for several months now. And I can tell you, it's fantastic. They truly work well, right? They work fantastically, I use it just as much as I do my wood oven. So ultimately, what is changing? We have a new design and door. The old door was with a vertical handle. The new one is with a horizontal handle. It comes straight out. It stays a lot cooler. The other thing is, originally it had a different chimney cap. If you've looked at original videos, um, even photos, it had a different chimney cap. We wanted it to be much more solid so that it would stay on in, in a, a structural way, right? So you can see this was kind of our prototype chimney cap that they sent to us, but now it is all uniform. It is the same chimney cap on both, the same chimney on both, but those are really the main differences. Uh, bolts on the exterior are all stainless steel, heavy duty powder coat, if it's exposed metal, it is stainless, just like it is with the rest of Fontana's products. So, first of all, uh, Pete, we have people watching. 
We good? Connection? Everybody have any comments? Do I need to move? Am I like, showing my belly off too much? No? All right. So you're good. All right, we're good. good. All right, so no, I'm, not, I'm not giving anybody a chance to make comments about my belly. So as we move forward, right, I um, am showing the Maestro 60 here essentially as a direct countertop. Now, the ovens themselves come with, and I don't know if you can see this or not. Lance, tell me if this is in focus. So what we have here are our standard feet that come with our ovens. And what happens is these, even with the regular Fontana products, if you buy them for countertop use, these screw into every corner. It has a heat resistant rubber head, which goes until it is flush. So it gives you a minimum of about a quarter of an inch of airspace. Now you can add more if you want to. As they come out of the box, these are already installed. Now, the reason there's a difference in height between these two ovens. Now, both of these ovens will come this way. So Lance, if you wanna bring it over, I wanna show you guys something. So I'm showing you the foot that it comes with along with these new riser feet. Now, the beauty of these is that it allows you to be able to install it directly on a non-combustible countertop. You can actually put this on a wood table. You can put it on a teak table. You could even, if you dare, put it on a plastic table. Obviously, it needs to be able to withstand the weight of these units, but you can see this is almost a flush fitting because it's literally only a quarter of an inch versus about two inches of space. So this comes as an optional install. However, if you are not using the oven on a non-combustible countertop, right, you must install the risen feet. So you have to have the riser feet. It literally just screws into place. You unscrew the old ones, screw in the new ones, righty tighty, lefty loosey, as simple as it can get, but it does come with the oven. Also, the oven comes essentially pre-assembled. So the oven comes, right, just like this. There are a couple bubble wrapped components. We have our door, we have our chimney, we have our chimney cap, all of those come inside as well as your stones, which now come packaged separately, but in the same box. Each stone is in its own cardboard box. So when you open up, I'll be right back. Your wonderfully designed Maestro box inside, let's see if you can see it. So this is the box for the Maestro 40. You can see the graphics on it and everything. It will come with styrofoam panels that go around all the sides. The oven is in a bag itself. And then there is a bubble wrap that goes across the top as well to prevent it from receiving any sort of damage from the top, right? So that's how they come, but it's as simple as it can get. You literally open the box, you take out the components, you assemble them and you hook up a propane tank, a 20 pound propane tank, you're ready to cook. And you can use this on any countertop or as I'm going to ask Lance to do really quickly, I'm going to show you very quickly our mini pizza desk, right? So this is our mini pizza desk, which acts as both a desk for your Maestro ovens. It's perfectly designed to fit the Maestro 60 almost exactly, or your Maestro 40, which gives you a little extra space. If you don't have a Maestro, can you still buy one of these pizza desks, these mini pizza desks? Absolutely. And it is a fantastic prep table, right? So I'm gonna show you later on. I'm gonna make a couple pizzas. It acts as a prep table. It also has the accessory stand, right? So you can add the accessories down the side of the desk as well. So you can put it on any non-combustible countertop or if you so choose, you can get one of our mini pizza desks. Now, one big difference between the 40 and the 60 is the opening of the mouth. So right now, we are looking inside of the Maestro 60. The Maestro 60 has a width of about 15 inches. I mean, that's approximate, right? The Maestro 40, alternatively, has a width of about 11 and a half inches. That means that you will not use a standard peel for this. This application for this oven is ideal for those who are weekend warriors that want to tailgate. If you want to bring it to the big game, you have the, the Super Bowl coming up, right, in February. If you show up with a pizza oven and you're pulling out pizzas every two and a half minutes to 90 seconds, you're gonna be the hit of the party. Uh, you'll be the halftime show, right? Forget about who's singing. Or if you want, you can take it with you camping, right? Does it weigh a lot? It weighs 45 kilos, which is approximately 100 pounds. It's 99 pounds. So 
Any big guy could pick it up, move by themselves. Alternatively, if you want, you can get two people. It really easily picks up and you can move it wherever you want to. If you are in a, a big city, right? And you have for yourself a very small balcony. You might not have the space for one, even the small Maestro 60. So you want to make sure that you have something that is going to work, even though it's small, right? It's gonna work fantastically, I would say, dare say, as well as some of our bigger ovens. You're just limiting yourself with capacity, right? So as you're looking at buying an oven, make sure that you know we have our Forno Toscano line, the Margherita, the Mangiafuoco, the Marinara that come in wood and or gas, right? But those are going to give you a much larger capacity. It is a different animal uh, when you're comparing that to one of these. But these, if you're limited or you're looking for a second oven, you have a wood-fired oven, but you want to have the benefit of a little gas oven. It is an awesome combo. I myself have a wood-fired oven down uh, below my deck, and on my deck, I have a maestro. I, it's completely covered when it's raining, if it's snowing, I can be outside cooking pizzas and it lights up just like our wood-fired ovens and gets up to temperature within 30 minutes. So I've said a lot and I know there's still a lot more to say, but we are now looking for those who are signing on, whether you've come on and come off, we're looking at the brand new Maestro 40 to add to the family of the Maestri, or that's the plural of Maestro or the master right, the, the conductor, if you will. So we have the Maestro 60 and the Maestro 40. Do you guys have any specific questions before I continue? At the moment, we have no questions. Zero questions, that's fantastic. All right, so let's do this. Um, I talked about the weight. So we have a 45 kilo or approximately 100 pound oven. How does that compare to the Maestro 60? So the Maestro 60 instead, and it's fairly easy to remember, right? You have the 40, which is 45 kilos, the 60, which is 60 kilos. Uh, for those of you at home who don't like mental math, which is uh, one kilo times 2.2 equals a pound, uh, you're actually looking at about 132 pounds, right? So 132, 100 pounds, a 32 pound difference, you get that difference in width, right? 16 by 16 versus the 22 by, excuse me, 16 by 24, right? So this is internally 24 inches for cooking surface area, 24 inches wide, 16 inches deep, 16 by 16, but you have a much smaller opening. So you have to use a specialized peel. So for those who want to pre-order a Maestro 40, we are offering them with this specialized peel. This is being given, right, for anybody who orders a Maestro 40. So you know you have the right size peel to be able to go in and out. We're in the process of developing a whole new line of accessories that will include smaller ones for the 40, but temporarily we do have a functional peel. We'll show you how that works. Um, and it's the right diameter. You don't want it too big, you don't want it too small. Otherwise, you're essentially making an easy bake oven cookie, right? You wanna have a large enough pizza where it's actually usable. Now, this got up to temperature once again within 30 minutes. Right now, I started it probably 35 minutes ago, right? The oven says it's right at 800 degrees. I'm gonna check my stone temp. And if you wanna check this with me, Lance, right? So I'm taking our infrared thermometer, which we sell on our website. It comes with our kits or you can buy it individually. So right now it's in Celsius. So it's 432 degrees Celsius. So if I switch it to Fahrenheit, I'm at 816 degrees. So we're right in line. For me, I like cooking a pizza at about 700 to 750 degrees. It's not a Neapolitan style pizza, but that will cook in about two to two and a half minutes. So as you look in the interior of the oven, you'll see we have a fantastic, incredibly efficient burner, right? Above that, we have a stainless steel shield. That is a proprietary forno, Fontana Forni technology of guaranteeing the longevity of your dome, right? So nobody else is doing this. I will and have compared our ovens to other products on the market. I will continue to, I guess, watch because I am going to be comparing them to some of the other brands that are on the market, which will remain unnamed. But there are some very popular brands that are on the market that are within this price point, as well as within this size, right? 
So if you're looking for an oven, sub $2,000, the Maestro 40 is where you wanna be. This right now is retailing for $19.99. This one is $23.99. This is the price that I was given. I will be back with you with the right price if that is incorrect, but that's what was emailed to me. That being said, you are not going to find a better product for under $2,000, right? These are phenomenal. They work just like our standard ovens, which retail up to about $5,000. But that being said, these are small tanks. This is not something that is riveted together. This is not something that is screwed together, right? Inside, it does have the welds that Fontana is so well known for. I know the camera's shaking a little bit. So I apologize, I misspoke. Uh, it is $16.99 retail. So for those of you who are looking, I apologize for the verbal flub. Uh, the retail on the Maestro 40 is $16.99 versus $23.99 for the Maestro 60. Now you are gaining additional square footage, right? You're starting off at 16 by 16 versus 16 by 24, but they're going to function in the exact same way. You're just limited with the size of pizza that you can make and how many pizzas you can make at the same time, right? So, um, do we have any questions, Pete, even with my verbal flub? We do not. We do not have any questions. So, uh, I would be remiss if I did not mention our deal this December. For the holiday season, what we are doing is we are offering for any order over $2,000, right? Holiday 22 is our uh, discount code, and that is going to offer the Saladini knife and fork set along with our standard accessory kit. Now they're gonna grab this Saladini knife set for me because uh, in retrospect, I should have grabbed it already. So I apologize. However, that is something that is gonna be offered for any order over $2,000. So you guys asked for it. People were really excited. They enjoyed their knives. They are now back in, so I have them in stock. They're ready to ship. I will show you the, I know we're talking about the ovens, but these are awesome. So the, the little town that I grew up in, right, um, was called, it's called Scarperia. It's in, uh, in Tuscany, about 30 kilometers north of Florence. And this little knife maker is there in that town. So since the Middle Ages, Scarperia has been known as a knife making town, right? That is what their specialty was. So you can see what we are using is all olive wood handles. This is a beautiful stainless steel knife that is tempered. It is really a piece of artwork that you can use on a daily basis. I have knives uh, from my parents' kitchen that we bought while we were there that we are still using to this day. I grew up in Italy. I lived there, uh, moved there when I was four years old and my whole family is there. So uh, if anybody ever asks why I have been coined the expert of uh, all things Fontana and pizza for the group. Uh, I do speak fluent Italian. If you guys ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I communicate with the Fontana factory um, because they are not only partners, but friends as well. And I have been cooking in wood-fired stoves, in wood-fired ovens ever since I was very small. My grandmother in her kitchen had a wood-fired stove. That's where she cooked everything, even a stove top. So I've been cooking in wood-fired ovens for a very, very long time. Um, if you do have any technical questions, you can also ask me. I have a lot of friends who are uh, engineers and physicists. I myself has a, have a nuclear physics degree. So uh, if you'd like to ask any specific questions about metallurgy, uh, fabrication, how it works and efficiency, I'd be happy to answer any of those questions for you. But let's look on a practical note, right? So we say that it works very well. Um, I am going to dial back the gas just a little bit. So you can see we have a single knob that allows for the size of your flame as well as being your igniter. So the knob itself is an igniter. You can hear that in the back. It uses a double A battery, which is housed directly underneath the unit in its own casing. 
And then you can control with this knob how large and how small your flame is. If you have a larger flame, you will have a hotter temperature inside the oven. The smaller the flame, the lower the temperature. But the nice thing about a gas oven is once you set the temp, once you figure out what temperature correlates with what spot on the knob, it will maintain that temperature, right? So we're gonna let this cool off just a little bit longer. Um, you do have a question for me? Oh, that's fantastic. All right, ask away. How does the dome compare to the Gosney? Oh, that's a good question. So I actually have a Gosney here um, because I was very curious and I wanna speak intelligently. I'm not going to speak disparagingly about anybody. So when you look inside a, a Gosney, we'll call it the dome, right? That's what everybody's interested in, the Gosney dome versus whoever else. So the Gosney dome, if you look on the inside, has a bent piece of stainless. It looks like, see, it appears to be a singular piece of stainless. So I do not know what the thickness stainless is. Um, it says, I believe, please uh, don't hold me to this, but when I read the manual, I believe it's 304, right? 304 is a type of stainless that is very rust resistant. And it's rust resistant because it has a very high chromium content. Now, what you need for stainless is a mixture of various different elements that prevent rust, but retain rigidity. The higher ferric or iron content a metal has, the stronger it will be. But the iron or the ferric content is what can oxidize, right? If it's all iron, it can rust, like your cast iron pot, right? If it's all stainless, then it bends really easily. Marine grade stainless, right? The more chromium there is, the softer it becomes. So over time, a 304 dome will start to break down. That's because it is not made to withstand the incredibly high temperatures that these ovens can achieve. Um, the burner that's in it is fantastic. Uh, the, the issue that you're gonna run into is, uh, I think they just started doing this, but normally they make you buy your door, uh, which costs about $200. Obviously ours comes with a door. I don't know why they would not give it to you, um, but it will get up to temperature in about the same amount of time, right? The issue being uh, stones, when you have to remove and replace them, I have no idea how you would do that with a Gosney because it's completely underneath the wall. Uh, you would literally have to take the entire oven apart from my perception of the unit itself. Versus our stones, literally you can slide them out by hand, put in a new one, uh, has insulation underneath as well. So it is completely insulated on the bo bottom, then it has stones all the way across the top, the sides, the front, the back, everywhere. So the external temperature is going to reflect that, right? No pun intended. Um, so when you're at, let's call it 800 degrees on the inside, the outside of our ovens, I'm gonna test this out. You're looking at 230 degrees, which may sound like a lot, but when you're comparing 800 degrees, which we just saw on the inside, right? I turned it down a little bit, but if you're comparing at 800 degrees, you're only at 230 versus a lot of these other brands that are out there that achieve four to 500 degree external temperatures, this is incredibly safe. I've never seen the exterior of one of our ovens exceed 250 degrees. That's me personally, I've checked, I've asked customers, same thing. That's how well insulated these ovens are. So hopefully that answered the question, right? Interior, it is stainless steel, um, it's all one piece, but if you ever needed to change anything, you would literally have to replace the entire dome, the entire oven. Um, versus us, we have that guarantee of the shield that goes directly over the burner. It receives the brunt force of all of that heat trauma. So if you ever have to change anything, you literally can go inside, slide that stainless steel plate out, lock up a new one back in place, and you're done. So hopefully that uh, answered that question. Um, awesome. Thank you, Pete. Could we see the knife set again? Absolutely. What, is it, what exactly does it come with? All right, so when you buy an oven this holiday season with um, the, the coupon code that you would put in on the website is HOLIDAY22, all one word, right? So you would get this knife set, which is a beautiful carving knife, right? This is handmade by Saladini in Scarperia, Italy in Tuscany. And you would also get this beautiful matching fork, olive wood handle. This is true olive wood, stainless steel forks. I've used this throughout the Thanksgiving season. It is a phenomenal product. So I'm gonna show you very quickly. It comes in a beautiful carrying box, 
right? Top slides open if you wanted to use it as a display. You absolutely can. However, I like to use my knives, so I end up utilizing them a whole lot more than if they were in the box, but it does come completely uh, packaged in this beautiful wooden box that comes with the, stone, the knife and the fork. On top of that, you would be getting our free standard kit, which is our peel, our turning peel, and our brush, right? It is a kit that retails for about $300. You'd be getting that free. This knife set also retails for around $300. You'd be getting that free. That's a $600 value that you'd be receiving free of charge with any order over $2,000, right? So that would include, I believe the caveat would be, the Maestro 40, right, does not use the standard kit, right? You would be receiving, alternatively, this custom peel for you, right? So it is the right diameter, exactly what you need. It's not going to be our standard kit. Until we have something completely manufactured for it, this is what we have, and it is a phenomenal little peel. So we're gonna use that here shortly. I'll show you how it works. I'm gonna check my temperature really quickly. I wanna make sure that we're on the same page. So we are at about 850 degrees. So these things are incredibly efficient. Um, probably talked too long, a little too long-winded, but we can do, I can show you how a, uh, a hot stone would interact with pizza dough. Um, what you want, this is, this is the distinctions. So we're gonna talk pizza. Um, people ask me all the time, what is a Neapolitan style pizza? I want a Neapolitan style pizza. Well, that's, you know, what's the difference between that and crispy, crunchy crust, uh, a Tuscan style pizza? That's like asking the difference between New York style and Chicago style. They're two completely different animals. The dough is different. The methodology in which you cook is different because that's the uh, environment of the oven. So in a Neapolitan style pizza, you typically use a much higher hydration dough. And there is a correlation between a high hydration dough and high temperature. What you do is you take this very wet dough, which is honestly a little bit difficult to manipulate, but you take this very wet dough and you put it in an oven that is between 850 and 900 degrees. What that will do is it makes the pizza cook incredibly rapidly, so about 90 seconds. So when you do that, that moisture that is within the dough itself does not have enough time to completely dissipate or steam off, right? If instead you like crispy, crunchy crust, because that will result in, um, a Neapolitan style will result in kind of crispy, crunchy crust on the exterior, but the inside is airy, it's chewy. You'll never be able to cut a slice and pick it up because it, in, in you know, my words is a little bit floppy as well because it's a wetter dough and it hasn't had enough time to solidify. So when you have a Tuscan style pizza, or you're looking for thin, crispy, crunchy crust, it is a lower hydration dough, so around 60 to 70% hydration. And that's cooked at a lower temperature of seven to 750, which will cook a pizza in about two to two and a half minutes, allowing for more of that moisture to dissipate or steam off, resulting in a more solid, crispier, crunchier crust. Does that make sense? Did I answer the question? Cool. All right, so I am going to take a dough ball out and I'm gonna roll it out um, I want to make sure that I make it the right size so that I can get it into the oven. So I'm going to uh, come over here. Lance, if you want to come on over, I will show how this works. So what we have here, I'm going to set this down, is once again, because not everybody will make their own dough, right? So this is store-bought dough. I was able to take this dough ball and I took it and um, cut it in half. You want a dough ball of about 200 to 250 grams. So if you don't have a scale yet, you should really get a scale. If you're planning on doing any sort of baking, you really should get a scale. So you can see that I've let this re-rise. What I did is I took the dough ball, I cut it in half, and then I let it re-rise in my refrigerator. We used our dough trays, which I'm showing right here. This is one of our single dough trays. We do have dough trays that we sell via the website, and this will actually fit in most refrigerators. This allows it to rise slowly in a colder environment. The warmer it is, the faster that yeast will activate, generating the rising process. So, we have our dough, 
And what we did is I took a little bit of flour and I do a light dusting. And the reason you do that is you don't want that dough to stick to whatever surface it is. Especially, it's not that cold here, but it was in the 40s this morning. The colder a surface is, the more likely it's going to be to stick, right? So you wanna make sure that it's not incredibly sticky on the exterior, and then you can either roll it out by hand. So I can show you, this is how we would start the process of rolling it out by hand. Kind of go around like this, and then you can actually stretch it by hand. So if we start doing stretching, this is what it looks like. So I don't wanna to go too big because it needs to go into our Maestro 60. So now I'm also gonna show you, some people are disparaging about people who use uh, rolling pins. I really like using a rolling pin because I like it crispier and thinner. I don't like a big cornichone on the crust. Some people do, some people don't. It's really just your own preference. So when you have it rolled out, you put it on the back of your hand with your fingers facing downward. And the reason you do that is you don't want your fingers to pop through. Take a little bit of flour, do another light dusting, and then you lay it down. At this point, you don't want this to sit too long. The longer it sits, the more that moisture is going to transfer through the dough and cause it to stick. So I'm gonna take my sauce. These are just San Marzano tomatoes that I crushed up. A little bit of salt, a pinch of sugar to bring down the acidity. And we go around evenly. You don't wanna to add too much. Now this is going to be a little bit of a thicker pizza, right? Because I made it smaller. So we have our sauce. I'm gonna use cubed cheese. So this is uh, mozzarella, fresh mozzarella. You can use little circles if you wanna have it um, already sliced up, or you can use these cubes. Now a lot of pizzeria in Italy will use cubed fresh mozzarella just like this. It gives it a little bit more of a uniform finish. Obviously a little bit of olive oil. We'll slide that on there just like this. All right. Now we're gonna use our peel. You wanna make sure that when you slide under, you come in at an angle and you push down. And you just allow the uh, momentum of pulling the pizza on to let it slide itself onto the peel. So we're gonna put it into our oven. We're gonna try this out. This is my first time using the Maestro 40. So we're gonna throw this bad boy in there and let it go. So I'm, you can see the steam already coming off because this is a little bit of a higher temperature stone. I'm gonna close the door to allow the efficiency of the oven to keep working. And I'm gonna set this right here. So uh, in the meantime, Keith, I actually am gonna get you to uh, hand me a turning peel, please. Any other questions in the meantime? So we are looking at the Maestro 60 and the Maestro 40. That's the difference that we're looking at. So this is a little bit smaller, this is a little bit larger. Thank you, Keith, for our turning peel. I'm gonna open this up real quick. Lance, if you wanna bring it back over, we will look and see how it's doing. So you can see the crust is already starting to rise, right? Turn this a little bit. Okay. So it looks like I may have turned it down just a little bit too much. Now I'm gonna close the door again and let it do its magic. So when you're cooking a pizza, it's always going to cook faster on the side closest to the flame, right? So as you're looking at this, you want to make sure that you're always rotating the pizza because it's always going to cook faster on the component that's closest to the heat source. So that's why you want to rotate it. So once it achieves this size, we want to make sure that we are staying after it. There we go. Let it keep going. So regardless of how small it is entrance on the exterior, we actually have 16 inches in width from side to side and front to back. So it actually gives us a lot of room to be able to manipulate and move around once you're in the oven itself. So we're almost ready. We're letting this go a little bit longer. And Looking, looking pretty close to being done. I'm just doing a little bit more browning and then we'll be done. Now, once again, I'll show you the stone temp here shortly. Bring it up a little bit, get a little bit of browning on top. 
All right, so here we have a nice little pizza. Now this has been prepped as more of a Neapolitan style pizza, right? So let me get our pizza wheel right here and slice this up. While you do that, Billy? Yeah. What is the hydration of the dough you're using today? That's a really good question. So I honestly, because I bought this from the grocery store, I really don't know. This is usually an American pizza pie. Gener is, is made with a little bit higher hydration. Plus it's made with a giant machine mixer. So it's typically a little bit tougher to use just because it is, um, it's overworked if you will. Um, this just so happens to be a really good dough that uh, isn't too sweet. It doesn't have way too much yeast um, and it's not incredibly wet. Also, when I cut it and reform it, I like making it a little bit drier. I usually add just a little bit of flour on the exterior that brings down the hydration. I know what the hydration is that I like, what it feels like. Um, so I can't tell you how much I added to this, but typically when we're making our own dough, I would encourage you to go onto our website because we have tons of recipes that are on there. And the best recipe, in my opinion, for pizza dough is our simple pizza dough recipe. And that's a 60 to 63% hydrated dough. All you need is all-purpose flour, salt, active dry yeast, water, and that's it. It's really, really simple. So if you haven't tried it yet, please do try it. Um, there's nothing like making your own dough versus buying pre-made dough, if that makes sense. So we have a, a nice little pizza here. I can make another one. I'll show you what a schiacciata looks like. A schiacciata literally means squished. So until we have uh, any other questions, we're gonna keep rolling with this. One more question. Perfect, go how many, ahead. How many pizzas can you do in the 40 versus the 60? So the 60 allows you, because of the dimensions, to do two pizzas simultaneously. It's 24 inches by 16 inches wide. So you could take two 11 inch, you could use two 12 inch pizzas as well, but I would recommend doing no more than two 11 inches simultaneously. Now because the pizzas cook so quickly, I really would recommend cooking really one pizza at a time. But when you're cooking a pizza, you are transferring thermal energy. That's the energy that the stones have to the dough. That's what causes the dough to cook. So when you bake a pizza on some stones that are, let's call it 750 degrees, that energy will transfer to the dough. The dough then will bake, and if, as soon as the pizza is finished cooking, when you uh, remove the pizza, if you shine your infrared thermometer on those stones again, it will actually give you a lower temperature because that energy, that temperature has sapped out of the stones and into the dough. So it may be down to six, 650. So what I like to do is I cook one pizza at a time, even if I have the space for two. And the reason I do that is I know I'll always have hot stones. So I start on the right. Once that pizza is done, the new one comes in, goes on the left. While that one is baking, the other stones are heating back up. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's essentially my process. But the Maestro 60 will hold two pizzas. The Maestro 40 will only hold one. So the schiacciata literally means squished. You generate these finger divots. And the finger divots are then filled with olive oil. So you do a little bit of olive oil, a little sprinkling of salt. Right now I'm just gonna do the olive oil, I'll add the salt later. Slide our peel underneath. Did you wanna check your stone temp one more time? We can check it, but I really wanna put it kind of in the same spot because it was a little bit hotter. I used a little bit of that heat to bring down the temperature of the stone itself. I'm sliding it back in place. So I now I'm gonna close the door again and let it do its thing. So this is gonna turn into a bread, right? So this is a wonderful little bread to have. I'll use this actually with a lot of my leftover dough. I'll make a lot of schiacciate. And once they're baked, you can actually stick them in the freezer, take them back out and use them for sandwiches later on. So um, I'm gonna keep checking on this from time to time. But if anybody is new that signed on, my name is Philippe. I am here with Fontana Ovens and Grills. If you can't uh, already see that, showing and debuting are Maestro 60 and brand new Maestro 40 ovens. These are a phenomenal gift for those who are interested or have a loved one who's interested in getting an oven, but they don't have the space 
or the budget to get a larger full-size oven for the time being. This Maestro 40 is fantastic if you live in an apartment complex, in condos, uh, if you have very limited space, if you want to be able to bring this oven with you pretty much anywhere, uh, taking it in the bed of your truck, take it camping, bring it tailgating. I mentioned earlier doing um, a Super Bowl party, right? Showing up with one of these ovens in the bed of your truck to be able to bake pizzas for everybody or make steaks, uh, make fish tacos, make dips. I've done buffalo chicken dip. I've done spinach artichoke dip. You can do all kinds of stuff in these ovens, utilizing various kinds of cookware. So hopefully that is uh, answers that question. So here we have our wonderful Skechaga. These ovens are for way more than just pizza, right? So we have our beautiful Skechaga here. I'll put it in a pan. Bring it on over to you so you can see. So this, imagine this cut open once it cools off a little bit. Cut open with some prosciutto inside, some uh, rucola or arugula. You can even put burrata on it. It's fantastic. And, and it's also great if you just slice it up. Once it cools off, slice it up. Eat it with a plate of pasta. Eat it with a steak. Eat it with dipping in sauces. Um, it's, it's a fantastic little add-on to your repertoire when you're baking in some of these ovens. Now, um, I will say one more time, uh, we have specific MSRPs on these ovens. $16.99 for the Maestro 40, $23.99 for the Maestro 60. This is an incredible price for a fantastic product that is a tank. It is a Fontana, right? Fontana's been doing this and making ovens since the 70s. So there's nobody out there that has the expertise the, the, the artisanship and the history behind metal, wood, and gas-fired ovens like this. Uh, nobody even comes close. So um, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I don't know how long we've been going, but um, I'm going to keep making pizzas here for uh, one of the guys in the office whose birthday it is today. Happy birthday, Keith. Thank you very and much. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Next week, we're going to start a new series. So I know we haven't had a lot of questions this week. I do want you guys to ask, ask us questions. We have FAQs. Um, if you think of something that you want to try to stump me, if you think of uh, a question about what can I cook, what can't I cook, why is this happening when I'm cooking in my oven, please come back. I will, in a live video, answer your questions as they come in. So the series is called Let's Talk About It. My wife's trying to come up with a little jingle right now for it. Just kidding. Uh, but if you guys want... This is gonna be an every other week deal. Uh, one week I'm gonna be showing a demonstration. The following week I'm gonna be doing a Let's Talk About It series. So please sign in next Monday. Uh, wait, do we have a question? We do have a question. Oh, fantastic. Can we put wood in the gas oven? Oh, that's a great question that we get fairly often. So with the current setup of our ovens, you do not add any wood to your gas oven. Now, most people would say, well, you lose the flavor. No, you, you don't lose any flavor. I can guarantee you if I put two pizzas in front of you, one cooked on gas, one cooked on wood, you would not be able to tell the difference. And that's because, let's think physics, right? So we'll talk about this in depth and other times as well. But very quickly, uh, when we're talking physics, you need, for smoke to permeate um, food, you need constant contact, extended periods of contact. And when you're cooking at 750 to 900 degrees, it's cooking in two and a half minutes to 90 seconds. That's not enough time for smoke to permeate anything, which is why in a smoker, it's low and slow. The heat, the smoke is coming from below, through grates, completely enveloping and surrounding a piece of meat for an extended period of time so that it can be permeated. Secondly, you do need that constant contact. If you were to fill your chamber with enough uh, smoke, you would deplete completely the oven of oxygen. Right? And you need oxygen to be able to have a flame. So when you are asking if you can add wood, um, you are really losing no benefit um, by just going gas. And uh, it's not set up for that. These are made to be portable, so you don't have to bring a big giant cord of wood. You can bring simply a 20 pound uh, tank, a propane tank. A 20 pound tank will give you approximately 20 hours of continuous usage. Obviously, that depends, depending on altitude, external temperature, all of those variables. But uh, just 
approximately 15 to 20 hours of usage for a 20 pound propane tank. Hopefully that answers that question. I can go more in depth if you guys want uh, on gas versus wood, combining them, benefits, detriments, the whole nine yards. But uh, I appreciate you guys signing in. Do check us out every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be doing these live videos. I'll continue posting on our social media platforms. Uh, that's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Follow us, please. Uh, my mom's got a bunch of recipes that have been on there for ages. She does a lot of the recipes with me. A lot of times you'll hear my wife in the background and the kids because we're a family business, but we are passionate about this product. I've been doing this since I was about 12 years old. And I can tell you, honestly, you're not gonna find a better product on the market. It's fantastic. It will enrich your lives. You are building culture. You are building community. These are not just a little accessory to add to your backyard. Right, So I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, please sign in next week and every week. If you get a chance, tell your friends about it. If they all have any specific questions, I'm here for you guys. Right, That is my role in all of this. So thank you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week and a wonderful preparation for the holiday season. Have a good one and we'll talk about it next week.